now they are under attack, not just here, but also in my state. The truth is that PLAs have proven to be very cost effective. In the 1990s in Dubuque, Iowa, the local building trades council negotiated private sector PLAs for nine sites, and four of these sites were for the DePaco Community Credit Union. These projects were completed ahead of schedule and under budget, and one of them is shown up on the screen. The President and CEO of DuPaco stated that building construction exceeded our expectation because it was finished 30 days ahead of schedule and 10 percent under budget. I have a list here of 280 PLA projects in the Quad Cities that were completed either on time or ahead of schedule. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent to enter them into the record. These projects include the Putnam Museum in Davenport, the St. Ambrose University Science Library, the Palmer Chiropractic College. And just recently, our Governor, Terry Branstad, issued an executive order banning PLAs on public works projects in Iowa, including an existing PLA in Cedar Rapids for the Cedar Rapids Convention Center, a city that was devastated by flooding two years ago when its entire downtown was underwater. Ironically, Mr. Chairman, the number one supporter for this PLA project moving forward is the current mayor of Cedar Rapids, Ron Corbett, who used to be the Republican leader of our State Senate. After the executive order was issued, Mayor Corbett asked the governor to consider using $15 million from a State Jobs Fund to finish the project, but our governor refused the mayor's request, and as a result, this enormously important economic development project is now on hold. Putting a work stoppage on this project is harmful to Cedar Rapids community and to Iowa. And if PLAs are banned in Congress, what is happening in Cedar Rapids will happen all over the country. That is why I urge my college to, colleagues to continue opposing any efforts to, to uh, end PLA funding. And now I want to talk about that PLA on the bridge in Minneapolis, which I happen to have in my hand. One thing we know is that this project finished early and under budget. That is correct, isn't it, Ms. Big? It was completed under a PLA in only 11 months and for less than the $250 million earmarked by Congress. And the Transportation Secretary, Mary Peters, said it should not take a tragedy to build a bridge this fast in America. And I should point out this PLA was entered into when George W. Bush was President. Isn't that correct? So. Then, uh, Mr. Baskin, um, you brought up something I want to talk about, and I, you went off script in your opening, so I wasn't prepared for this, but you mentioned the Iowa Events Center, something I happen to know a great deal about. You said, when referring to these building projects, those did fall down, causing fatalities and untold told damages. Do you remember saying that? Yes. In fact, the Iowa Events Center did not fall down, did it? Only a large crane which killed a construction worker. When he the events center did not fall down, did it? Uh, part of the construction did, yes. Well, well semantics. It's, it's, the center, it's, the building it's certainly itself. the building itself never fell down. And tragically, one worker, a 65 year old steel erector, was killed. And we know that on massive construction projects of this side, regrettably, fatalities are not uncommon whether or not they are union contractors. Isn't that true? Yes, we will agree that the safety level and you, in non-union is roughly the same. And so one of the things that you talk about is the challenges that your group has filed to these PLAs. In fact, you filed a challenge in Iowa on that event center project, and the Iowa Supreme Court, in a six-to-one decision, upheld the right of that PLA to move forward, even though my state is a right-to-work state. Isn't that true? Well, I didn't. The local chapter did. I won't. The local chapter of the group you are here testifying on behalf of today filed that suit. It went all the way to our Supreme Court, and they upheld this PLA. Right. And as a result, there were cost overruns, construction defects, nearly 50 construction accidents, and uh, I, it was not a model project. There have uh, been uh, papers written on just that project and the problems that happened with it. And it is your, your testimony today, then, on, on massive uh, construction projects built by non-union contractors, those problems you identified have never occurred? No, but the, okay. but the, the re sorry, reason Mr. is Chairman, we are, the burden is on, the, and if I may finish, respond, the finish. burden is on those who are seeking to uh, discriminate. And the justification has been that PLAs are better somehow, and that PLAs don't have safety problems, and that they don't have delays, and we, all the things we just heard. And that is simply not the case. They do have these problems, and then some. And so then what is the justification for discrimination, which they unquestionably have? 
And that's our only point. And we're only talking about government-mandated PLAs. We are not uh, concerned here today with private, if what the private sector wants to do with their own money is for them to decide. Sometimes it's under coercion. We are not arguing about that. And so is it your testimony today that the ABC is not opposed to private PLAs? We are not. Uh, we, we stand for the proposition that private employers can decide how to spend their own money. All right. Thank you. Uh, quickly recognize the ranking member, and then I want to get to the ranking member of the full committee. Uh, for unanimous consent, a, uh, to submit it to the record from the Campaign for Quality Construction, uh, testimony that says PLA do not discriminate.